Hello, this is Dr. Alan Yim. In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to use a common tone diminished seventh chord. So, unlike a regular diminished seventh chord, the common tone diminished seventh chord does not resolve with a half step up to the leading tone. So, let's see what the difference is. So, I have here in C major, we all know that if you borrow a fully diminished seventh chord like this, the way to look at this would be, okay, the B, that's the leading tone, T, is going to resolve up to Do, like this. Okay, so it really doesn't matter how you spell the rest of the chord. Um, you could just, again, this is the funny thing about the chord. I could spell it, oops, okay, this is on the line. Pretend that's on the line. I could spell it as an E, G, oh, uh, sorry, let's take a look at this. E sharp, G sharp. B, D. I could spell it like that. And it's still going to be considered this chord if it resolves to a one chord. So let's pretend the bass is there um, So to C. And the main part of this to pay attention to is this. Okay, so it's T moving to Do. When you see this, that's the normal function for a diminished chord regardless of the spelling because remember as you can see here I did not spell it correctly but if I play it it's still going to sound okay so is that half step motion from T to Do and the fully diminished seventh quality going to the tonic chord that makes it a seven going to one now for the common tone diminished seventh chord there is a, as you might expect, a common tone. So what is it? And first of all, they don't even bother. We're not going to bother. We're going to just put CT diminished 7 to abbreviate for common tone diminished 7. The common tone will be the tonic. So it will be DO. And the common tone usually is spelled like this. Okay, so here it is. And we could just write it like this. And you notice, sharp, so D sharp, F, A, flat, hopefully I get this right, oh wait, 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 okay, hold on a second here, yeah, this D sharp, F sharp, A, C, there we go, okay, it's kind of the same thing, but now the effect will be slightly different, so it's going to sound like this, okay, so in the in up above, we have something like this. And actually, maybe I should have written it in harm. Well, I can't write it in harmonically. And then the common tone. A lot of times, the tonic chord will also be over here. So you'll get sort of this kind of thing. Um, and if I add the bass, it's going to sound maybe something like this. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Hmm. So, see. I could just actually keep a one in the bass if I like. All right, and then now let's write it in four parts. So, resolving the common tone diminished seventh is very similar to resolving the fully diminished seventh chord. So just a reminder, when you have a fully diminished seventh chord, you will have intervals of a diminished fifth or, okay, I'll write this in the bass clef, or this is not one chord, or you may have augmented fourth. The diminished fifth, when you find them, resolves inwardly like this, okay, so, and the augmented fourth will resolve out. Everything is stepwise. So resolve this out and diminished fifth resolve in. Now I know this is kind of a specialized chord, so it's easy to forget these things. So make a mental note to yourself. The augmented fourth resolves out, the diminished fifth resolves in. These are enharmonic intervals, of course. But when they're spelled this way, this is the normal resolution, and it results in smooth voice leading. All right, we're going to put the 
for this chord, we're going to put the tonic at the top. Actually, I, we don't really need to do it this way, but, hmm. Okay, I'm going to do it about this way anyway. It's going to look something like this. Okay, so C fully diminished 7. Let me get rid of this. We know this is going to end up with a C. Maybe I should write the chord first, but all right. Now, notice, when you are resolving to 1, the spelling of this chord is normally sharp 2, fully diminished 7, okay? But we write this. We write CT, diminished 7, and, um, oh well, let's try it out. Let's see. Oh, hmm. If I put the sharp 2 here, it might be a little bit better. Now, you will see many, many enharmonic spellings when you're working with fully diminished seventh chords. Um, not really sure what to tell you about this, but uh, you have to watch out how you interpret fully diminished because there's so many ways of looking like what's the root of the chord. So, uh, in this case, you'll see, well, you'll see a common tone from the fully diminished seventh going to the tonic rather than a leading tone. That's really the clue. Okay, so I'll just put it here, common tone. And now we have to have an E, the D sharp. Looks like it's gonna go up to the E. Oh, by the way, let's, let's take a look. So let's see if this rule over here on the right applies to this or not. So, okay, so we have to look for a fifth or a fourth. Well, let's see. A to D sharp. Okay, so this is the augmented fourth. Oh, I, I messed it up, didn't I? Okay, so this should resolve out like this. Oh, well, okay, if I write the chord like this, you see I'm going to get a bad inversion here because I'm going to get a 6-4. All right, but I'm going to leave it just for, for purposes of resolving it in the way that it's written. Okay, so this, this one here is... We could just say A diminished 7, that's fine. Because remember, any note of the fully diminished 7th chord can be the root. And then over here, F, so um, C, and F sharp. Okay, well C is the common tone. And then F sharp is going to go down to the E. Okay, so if we were to resolve this normally, it would be something like this. Now, Probably I wouldn't do this because for a six chord, four chord, this should really go up. Really. So this sort of didn't work. Um, and, and plus it's a half step up there. That that would work better. We want to double the, the fifth. So we'll have normal doubling. All right, let's see what this sounds like. Here's the common tone diminished seventh as written in the key of C. Obviously, you have to resolve this, perhaps, okay? So depending on how you spell it, um, it, it will affect the inversion of the next chord. All right, we're going to do one more, um, and that is a common tone diminished 7 to 5. And the reason why I'm doing this one is just to show you what the common spelling of this is. So, okay... So we're going to do common tone, diminished 7, going to 5. Now, you may have noticed the relationship between, let's go back over here for a second, 1 and sharp 2. It's an augmented second away to the root of that, of this. So from 1, right, from 1 to 2 here, actually sharp 2, it's an augmented second. So you might imagine, if we're going from 5, the spelling of this, the normal spelling, will be an augmented second again, which gives you a sharp 6, fully diminished 7. Okay, so that's the way you could think of the spelling of this chord. It's an augmented second up from the root of this chord. It's going to be a sharp 6, fully diminished 7. So let's see what happens here. All right. We know that in the key of C, I'll keep it simple here, we're going to have a G chord here, and that's going to be the common tone. So or the, so the usually the spelling of this chord, the common tone is normally the seventh of the chord. So that's how we get to this 
sharp six. You'll see in a second here. Okay, so what's how do I spell this thing? Well, sharp six in the key of C is A sharp. I'll put that down here. I'll just to make it easy so that you can see this A sharp, C, E, okay, and then G. So there's a fully diminished seventh chord. And of course, you know, we're gonna resolve this sort of similarly to the other one. Probably this would go up, to, the tenor is gonna go up to D because if you look at this, okay, there's that diminished fifth. Oh, by the way, left out an accidental here. This is C sharp. Okay, and then the other interval from A sharp to E, again, that's a diminished fifth. So let's resolve that inwardly and see if it works. Okay, so the E would go down. Oof, doesn't look too promising here because I have a double fifth there. And the, oh, this is gonna go up to B. Okay, so this leads to this. Okay, that's okay. Here's what it sounds like. So in the key of C, here's the common tone diminish. This is almost like a secondary chord. Okay, so we can go. So, um, now, oftentimes this chord is just an ornament. You should think of this, right? It's, it's really ornamental. It doesn't really progress. Why doesn't it progress? Well, because you don't have this leading tone. It's just, right? So, doesn't really kind of, doesn't really move that well. But it can have a dramatic effect. And it was used by, you know, all of the common practice composers. So I'll give you a, a few examples here for this Mozart example. Tchaikovsky, very familiar. Okay, so this is um this is common tone going to five because we're in the key of D. And so this is one. This is I'm sorry. This is five. A. Okay, this is from uh, of course the Nutcracker, the Waltz of the Flowers. So there's another example, um, but it can be used also dramatically. So here's a little um, theme from a Brahms Symphony Number no. Three, and here's what it sounds like. Okay, so it went by pretty quickly, but it's one common tone diminished seven one, and here's the chord F. Here's the common tone, and here's the one again. The voicing does help because you hear the, the wide leaps, and so it kind of covers up the, the, I hate to say it, but the cheesiness, right? So it doesn't sound cheesy at all. All right, that's it for this video. I hope this helps you to understand how to write and the function of the common tone diminished seventh. Thanks for watching.